Welcome to the open Q&A session. Um, today, I kind of thought I'd have a little bit of a plan in store. We're going to do a little bit of open chat because there's some good questions that have come through from the last one and people have been asking now. Um, but uh, I was hoping we might spend a bit of time uh, looking at doing arrangements of stuff because it's something I get asked about quite often. Uh, is, is like how you do a chord melody arrangement. So, you know, I did, I did one, I've got one on the site, a, a Beatles one uh, of yesterday, a little, you know, the... Oh God, I was pushing the old memory bags. But you can hear the way that I'm playing the chords and the melody at the same time. So I thought I might, it might be interesting for you guys to, uh, uh, if I explain a little bit about how how I go about doing that, that, that and it might help you be able to do it as well. Because I think it's a really fun uh, thing. And I was first thinking about doing it to a jazz tune because it's very often a jazz, this idea of doing chord melody is very much a jazz thing. If you, you know, you... Starlight, you know, having these quite complicated chord changes going on um, uh, while you're doing a chord melody. But if you can't do a basic song, like for example a Beatles song, then doing a chord melody, a jazz chord melody, is going to be a bit harder. So I thought it might be more fun to uh, to do a Beatles song. Now, uh, if I was doing a chord melody, it would be very likely that I would uh, find the song that I was going to do and listen to it a bunch of times, transcribe it try and work out the melody that way, uh, the melody and the chords. But for most people, working all of the chords and that stuff out is a little bit trickier. And I happen to have this Beatles uh, Complete Chord Songbook out uh, because I'm going to do a Beatles book this year, uh, uh, you know, like my other songbooks, but all Beatles songs. So it's easy for me to have a little reference and just look through and think about which songs there's going to be what, and it's kind of convenient. And... Um, some of the some people mentioned that a, a nice one to, to do would be in my life um and i think that's a, a really good one i haven't really looked at it i know the song of course i've done a lesson on it um but i thought that it's kind of the chords are it's got an f sharp minor bar chord in it but and, and a b maybe somewhere but the rest of it it's not particularly difficult so uh Give me some yeses if you want me to continue going on with this, trying to explain doing a, a, a thing in, in my life. Uh, or whether you'd prefer to just do open Q&A as normal and I'll do a lesson on this at some point. Are you guys up for doing this? Um, uh, chord, uh, explaining how I might go about trying to do a chord melody. Um, okay, I, I, I wish this was uh, faster. It's like a... 30 second delay or something. Um, let me just get a little cleaner sound. Okay. Oh, there's a few yeses coming up. So, um, the first thing that I'd be starting, oh, loads of yeses. Okay, so we'll stay with this then. I love this delay thing. It's like, oh, I'm not really sure if they're interested. Yes, they're definitely very interested. So, uh, the first thing that I normally go for is just looking at what the chords are. Now, if you're uh, not into transcribing or not at the point where you're transcribing, you definitely you need some sort of chord book going on. So um, the first thing I'd be just looking at, at doing this. And then just thinking about how the melody sits. If you can, it's really helpful to be able to sing it. To go, there are places I remember. God, that's not my... Key, but I'll struggle on some for A chord E for F sharp minor to A7 over G to a D D minor and A da da. So once you've got you're familiar with what the melody is, you need to find how to play the melody. Now that's easier said than done for many of you, but it's the best way to do it is to try and find melodies on your own. And if you can't find a melody on your own, then you should learn how to do it, okay? 
So this particular one. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I can find the melody for that fairly quickly. What you, if you can't do that, which I'm assuming for most of you, you can't, you're going to need to find the melody. So let's talk about that for for a second. So the first thing you want to do is, if you, like I said, if you can sing, there are places. Then you've got to find there are places. So you yeah, there are, are places. Okay, so I'm trying to find the melody there. There are places I remember. Okay, I know where those notes are, so it's kind of it's it's difficult for me to fake not being able to find them. But it, very likely for you, you'll go there. So finding the first note, actually, let's go rewind it just back a little bit. Again, this is where singing can be really, really helpful to, to have the chord. There are places there. And then find that first note there, 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 way. There are, there are, there are. So if you can sing and go there are, until you find the right one. Now, um, that process would you would need to keep going with that to find in this particular song it's it's not particularly difficult so fourth fret uh, fourth string second fret fourth fret fourth fret on the third string second fret fourth fret second fret on the second string Fifth fret, second fret. In fact, it's all using the A major pentatonic if you look. If you're familiar with that. But I know that that's a struggle for many people. Now the other options, if you if you're really struggling to find how to play the melody, and like I said, I'm, I'm going to say again, I think it's important that you learn how to find a melody on your own. It'll be really, really good for your ears to learn how to find sounds on the guitar. Because if you can't do that, you're missing a, a very important part of musicianship that I think it's worth learning. And, and it might be a bit of a struggle. If you really struggle with one song, try a different song. And if you really struggle with that, try a different song. And if you're really still struggling, then you might need to do maybe go and do a little bit of the interval ear training on my website. That might kind of tu help tune your ear a little bit. So... Try and the first thing would be to try and find the melody. The, the other option as well, I should point out, would be to read music. So if you if you buy this particular book, only has chords in it, right? So it doesn't have any melody. But there are other Beatles books that have the melody as well. There are even some that have the melody in tab if you needed it. But say again, you really good idea to learn how to play the melody by yourself, by ear, just with a starting note. So the next stage is then trying to figure out if you can play the starting notes while you play the chord. So this first chord was A, and the melody was There are places Actually, there are, starts before the bar There are places So I need to play this melody and while I'm holding an A chord. So I can play an A, and then I'm just... And now I'm, I'm doing finger style because in a chord melody arrangement, you need to be careful of what strings you're doing. When you're strumming, um, you don't control what the top note is, because it'll be the thinner string. Whereas when you play a chord melody, it's usually the top note that we hear as being the melody. So for here, I'm just playing the strings five, four, and three. Then the chord changes to an E. And we've still got this melody. There are A. Da, 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 da. Now it's E. The melody goes B, C sharp. Now B. I could stretch up like that, but that's quite difficult. B is also an open string, which happens to fit lovely over the E chord. E chord. Now we've got an F sharp minor. 
love us, love is there. The melody note is E, C sharp. Could play it either at the fifth fret to the second fret or the open E string. Probably do it there if it was me. A7 with a G sharp bass, which is basically just an A chord with a G note on the bottom with the second finger is how I'd recommend playing it. So we got this, but this is on a D chord. Now if we were going to do it here, because it's a D, we've only got that fourth string open. And it doesn't really give us much major or minorness. Now, if I was going to play this, probably I'd use a C shaped version of the D chord. Okay, it's getting a little bit tricky. That's fifth fret, fourth fret, fourth fret to get the C note with a D major. And when it hits that, it goes to a D minor. Major. Now to get that one, I'm having to use 5th fret, 3rd fret, 2nd fret. Okay, this is not super easy, so I don't, want, I don't want to be under the impression that this was a beginner idea. It's not. This is for guys that are you know, looking to expand their playing a little bit. Okay? But you've already got now... Da, 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 da. Just starting with uh, the chords first of all, learning what the chords are, then trying to find the melody, and then seeing if I can find a way of playing that melody note within the chord shapes that I've got already. And sometimes you're going to find that you can't play the melody within those chord shapes, and you might have to move it somewhere else. Now, I was starting in an open position because it's a, a, a little bit easier place to start for most people. But you could definitely, at the beginning, I started when I was trying to sing it, there, uh, up there. Now, if I was doing it there, pretty hard. But I was just trying to give you an idea of, of seeing that you can take that, once you've got the melody there, you can try and find it in other parts of the fingerboard to fit the sort of chords that you might like to play. And that's still, this is very, uh, as an exercise, I'm not really trying to get it kind of uh, musical too much yet. I'm just really concentrating on just getting the, 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 the basics kind of under my fingers of where it might be. Now, um, I'm going to look to the chat in a second uh, and see if there's any questions, because I'm sure that there are some uh, like that. But the next stage would be then to start to try and be a little bit more creative with it and see 
if I could use some other chords that were different or, or different chord voicings, I'm just thinking um, the E chord would be nice to put a G sharp bass on it. So we get this nice da 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 maybe. Okay, so I'm just trying to you know move it um move it around a little bit beyond beyond the the straight harmony to look at mate you could also go as far as substitutions and stuff. Um uh, I'm just seeing if there are any questions. What I'm hearing more than anything else is that the mistakes can take a known song into really interesting directions. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very true. They're uh, miracles. Uh, Tawny, whatever. Uh, okay, melody in different ways is pretty much a guitar thing, right? Can't do that on piano. But you can play the piano in different octaves on the piano. Um, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a guitar thing to be able to play it in so many different ways. Uh, Ethan asked for new tips for guitar, uh, guitar tips for a new guitar player. That was the last hour. Uh, not the place for s tutorial requests, Stefano. Uh, but you can try. Uh, when somebody plays some notes over chord, do you hear that he play, for example, fifth or third of the chord? Um, because I understand theory fairly well, I'm, I, I can tell straight away what the quality of the note is over the chord, but I often find it nice not to think about it too much and just to be thinking of the melody and the chord shapes and, and, and trying to find, literally find where I can play that melody around the chord. Um, uh, something of the cure, it's a cure request. Um, Improv chromatically, so what you're saying is look at all 12 notes. Okay, that's somewhere else. Can you recommend some good theory books, Silent? I have a music theory book that you might want to check out on my website. Uh, can you go into more detail about upstrumming alternate picking? Maybe. Okay, there's not so many questions about the uh, um, chord melody. So that's either because you guys are completely lost and you just like okay, I don't, uh, this is going too fast, this is too hard for me. I'd rather do straight ahead questions or not. Um, what have we done? We've done 20 minutes. Um, or, uh, okay, uh, thank you, Jane. I uh, can't pronounce your last name from this distance. It's got a K on it. Thank you. Um, uh, okay, it looks like I'm just going for some Q&A. Now, I think... Okay, Justin says, I find myself strumming too hard, hitting the strings too hard. Any tips? <laughs> Hit them softer. I mean, it's... Yeah, if you're hitting them too hard, if you find yourself, just consciously make an effort to play softer. Try playing really super soft and see if you can, you know, practice everything really, really quiet and see if that influences your playing. That would be the other thing that you might like to try. Would you recommend a Fender USA standard over a Mexican one for intermediate guitar players? Jeremy. I don't know. I don't know what guitar you should buy. Go to the music shop and play some and see what you what you like. All guitars can be modified. So if you don't like the pickups, change the pickups. If you don't like the neck, change the neck. If you don't like the tuners, change the tuners. You know, find a guitar that you really like. You know, that you enjoy playing. Um, uh, how do you stay disciplined when sticking to a practice routine? Uh... Make sure that you you enjoy the practice routine. That would be the answer. So if you're doing a practice routine that you don't like very much, it's going to be very hard to stick to. So um, yeah, that would be my recommendation. Would be to try and make uh, try and do look at my effective practice routine and draw a practice uh, routine that you think that you're going to really enjoy doing and understand why you're doing it. So occasionally uh, you might practice something that's maybe not fun. Um, but you know it's good for you and if you know it's good for you then you're more likely to practice it and not feel not feel upset or begrudged about the fact that you're practicing it um uh justin when are you going to do a master class in the uk asks reverend bob uh i've been talking about it for ages i've got to admit um 
The reason that I do the ones in Tuscany is because I really enjoy the, ho the holiday in Tuscany. One. Two, that everybody goes away and they've got no other commitments. Whereas if I do one in the UK, it's, people are still going to be in work mode, I suspect. Um, but I don't know. It's, it's definitely on the cards. It, it might not end up happening this year because I've got some other stuff happening later in this year, which will become uh, more noticeable uh, later in the year. How is it when I start, when I talk about it? Um, okay. Is there some guitar player you still want to meet in person? Oh, there's loads. I haven't met Mark Knopfler yet in person. So I'd really like to meet Mark Knopfler. Uh, Eric Clapton, I haven't met. Really like to meet him. Eric Johnson. Uh, well, yeah, no, I haven't met him either, really. Uh, yeah, loads. Loads of guitar players that I'd like to meet. Um, different types of amplifiers, tube, etc. And advantages and disadvantages. Tubes sound better, generally speaking. Uh, so that's their advantage which is a pretty massive advantage being that's the whole point of the amp is to sound good so if tube amps sound better then that's the point um, what's your approach to transcribing lyrics to guitar versus a guitar part I example arranging a song for fingerstyle I found transcribing lyrics is much harder okay so maybe you're talking about what we we're talking with this in my life thing there um, yeah, it's just about practicing finding the melody. I really, for pretty much every level of guitar player, from beginners to more advanced guys, I really recommend picking a melody and then trying to play that melody. Um, I'm just going to pick whatever the next uh, uh, silly song request comes up. Um, uh, um, oh, there's uh, for unusually there's no song requests on there. I was just going to pick one and then try and play the melody of it uh, as a way of showing you to try and play. Um, uh, and there's still none. Oh come on! How can there not be a, a, a song request sneaking in there? Um, I'll come back to it. Can I play banjo? No. Female guitar players I'd like to meet. Well, not because. Well, this is just kind of a funny loaded question, isn't it? If I, you know. There's uh, there's no guitar players that I'd like to meet because they're girls. Um, female guitar players that I really rate is not many. There's a great girl in the UK called Jess, who used to be a student of my friend Dario. She's an incredible guitar player. Um, I could probably meet her if I like. I should ask Dario. She's, she can seriously play, like Vernon, smoking player. Uh, there's not many girl guitar players that I really rate that highly, and that's not a sexist thing it's just there's a few famous ones that I don't think are particularly good guitar players but are famous for reasons other than um, the fact that they can play guitar which is um, sad actually I, I wish there was more properly great girl guitar players I'm sure there's some and that's not to say there aren't any right I don't want to dig myself into a nasty hole I hate you for asking that question because it's such a loaded one and you can get yourself in all sorts of trouble by saying something the wrong way. I'm sure there are many, many fantastic girl guitar players that I just haven't heard about yet. The ones that you hear about tend to be heard about because they've got big boobs or they're hot or, you know, bad reasons like that. And and the, maybe the good ones aren't getting the attention that they deserve. But I, I definitely think uh, there should be more great girl guitar players around. Let's stop that. Question. Okay. Um, okay. I've just noticed that Momo Kid, Under the Bridge. So, um... Any of you that have got a guitar out now, okay, the first chord in Under the Bridge is E flat. So the first melody note is here, this uh, G note on the second fret of the, uh, uh, sorry, the second string, eighth fret. So can you play the melody to Under the Bridge? learning to play the me a melody like that just to be able to hear it and be able to play it I think is a really really important skill because it's it's showing that you can express yourself through the instrument all of these people a lot of people talk about you know playing fast and doing this and doing that and it's but if you're not if you can't play a simple melody 
that you know in your ears, if you can't express yourself through the instrument on in such a basic level, I don't think it's fair to say that you're expressing yourself when you're playing all sorts of fast stuff, right? And, uh, you know, licks and tricks or whatever. They're, it's kind of a bit more gymnastics. So I think that learning to find a melody on your own is, is, is a really, really, really important skill to be able to do. And, and I recommend just trying to pick any sort of... Um, any melody, TV shows, nursery rhymes, whatever you like, and just doing five, ten minutes a day of trying to find a melody. It's really, really helpful. Really, really helpful. Um, uh, okay. Okay, we've got loads of the songs now. Um, I got some strange fret buzz on the second and third fret of my A string. Any idea what could be causing it? Uh, uh, no rock, I've got no idea what could be causing it, but the first thing you should do is change the string because sometimes you get a defective string that can make string buzzers. So I definitely recommend changing the string first of all. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, try that. If not, it might be one of the frets that's just a little bit sunk or worn out. So you probably need to take that to a guitar store and get them to have a bit of a look at. Um, Okay, uh, Smokey is getting better. My cat, that's my cat. Somebody's asking about my cat who's just had a big abscess on his neck. And uh, yeah, he's still got a cut there. The stitches look like they're healing and he's got this big gaffer tape thing around his neck at the moment. Um, Anna Vodovich. Yeah. Okay, Larry's just mentioned female guitar player. Yeah, she can play. Classical guitar player. She is incredible guitar player. Yeah, I'd love to meet her one day just to have a play because she's absolutely... I mean, she'd just make me really embarrassed of myself actually because uh, my classical skills are not even you know not even on the same page as her stuff she's incredible yeah so there are definitely great um, uh, female guitar players around um, Justin you said in one of your ACDC lessons that you regret not seeing them live yet have you seen them yes I have seen them now I have I have seen but no I had seen them when I did that said that video I think but I hadn't seen them with Mal that was the thing that was disappointing for me. So I never saw Malcolm Young play live, which is because he's like the best rhythm guitar player. He's the best rock rhythm guitar player, maybe the best rhythm guitar player ever, I think. He's just so on it, you know. It's such a shame that he's he can't play it with him anymore. Um, okay, opinion on born talent, whether guitar players with God title can be reached by us mortals. I'm very irritated when the call of a guitarist god because it makes me think that i can't achieve it well wow big question so what most of the great guitar players have is something unique about what they do and that they've really dedicated their lives to doing it so if you really want to be a guitar god like a you know eric clapton or Jimi hendrix or something like that you some of it's kind of not luck maybe luck it's kind of that mixture of really hard work and serendipity of, of being having the right type of artistic voice that connects with a lot of people. You know, that's part of the part of the thing, I think, for those a lot of the great artists so that they've just got something that connects with a lot of people, whether it's pop bands or great guitar players or whatever. They've got something going on. But there's also a lot of hard work and touring and promotion and all of that sort of stuff that needs to happen as well. You know, I know some terrific guitar players. That, are, that don't do too much really exciting stuff because they're just not into all of the whole self-promotion stuff, you know, which is a pretty narcissistic and vain and horrible little place to visit. But but if you want to be a successful musician these days, I think you have to have some drive in the self to, self-promotion department. Otherwise, it's just probably not going to work for you. Um did the Stones prevent you from teaching one of their songs? They, uh, the Stones used to block people for teaching their songs, but they don't seem to anymore. So I've done a few Stone songs, uh, uh, and they haven't been pulled. So I might do some more. Uh, I I played in a Stones tribute band for a long time, so I know a lot of Rolling Stones songs. Uh, yeah, for some time, for seven years, I played in a Rolling Stones tribute band, so I know a lot of Stone songs pretty good. So I might end up doing some more well probably we'll do some more stone songs um i don't do private skype lessons sorry andreas i just don't have time um it takes commitment to make you a great guitar player it does indeed what do i think of kenny wayne shepherd um i don't know enough of his stuff to make a comment on that um 
but I, 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 the name carries lots of good feelings, so I'm fairly sure that he's an incredible guitar player that I should get to know. In fact, I'm going to put it on my list here to, to listen because, um, yeah, I don't know why. I, 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 I like having some new guitar players to listen to, and I, I definitely know the name, but I don't know his music. Um, oh, okay, Kevin asks, the feel was stuck in a rut with a pentatonic scale. Everything I play sounds bluesy. How do I uh, attack this to change the feel of my sound? So it, um, the pentatonic inherently fits in a blues style pretty well. So I think if you wanted to not play blues, you should maybe explore the different alphabets. So um, I'm not sure what you wanted to play. If you were trying to add a kind of a jazz, a jazz kind of thing in, then... Uh, you probably want to look at some jazz licks or some, you know, using the Mixolydian mode or the Dorian mode or using altered scales. But jazz has got a whole other kind of language, a, a whole new harmonic vocabulary that you'd have to get down with. Um, if you wanted to play country guitar, you need to learn kind of country licks and country scales, which would be the major pentatonic. Um, if you haven't explored it already, one thing that I think is a really good thing uh, for people that feel like they're stuck in a blues rut is to explore the major scale. Because uh, a good example is playing on stuff like uh, Wish You Were Here uh, is in G major. Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton's in G major. Um, so learn the G major scale. This, you know, the... Just pattern one of the G major scale. And then try and learn to make music from it over a backing track. Because, because the shape is different. You, you won't find yourself using all of your whatever you know your standard kind of blues lick stuff aren't going to happen as, as easily so um and another tip that can really help you avoid playing scalarly scalarly if that's probably not the right word scalic don't know what the word is for that in a scale like manner uh because often when people start with the major scale and they go to improvise they start <laughs> sounds a bit scaly and boring uh, just try using one finger you know just uh, and, and, and improvise over some backing tracks in the key of G so uh, any songs that have just got the chords uh, G, A minor, B minor, C, D, E minor. If they've just got those chords in them, you can improvise with the G major scale over them. And it's a nice way of kind of moving around the blues thing uh, because it's a different scale shape. So hopefully that will help you, uh, that'll help you out there a bit. Um, what do I do outside guitar and music or is it that your occupation? That's, it's my occupation. It's my day job. I'm in the studio every day. Uh, doing guitar related stuff so either teaching you writing courses doing sessions uh writing practicing uh you know all of the associated stuff um upvote for scale like manner i think scale like manner is the way to go definitely um can you do a listen on steve miller band's jet airliner well it's not a request fest um what do you tend to put in your australian Songbook. Yeah, there's some Paul Kelly and there's some John Butler and there's plenty of Rose Tattoo and Cold Chisel and uh, Johnny Diesel and the Injectors and um, the Hoodoo Gurus, all of that, you know, proper The Angels, uh, Courtney Barnett, if she actually gives me permission to put her songs in my book. Uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Spider Bait. Uh, what was the band called that did Frog Stomp? What was that called? Young Kids. Now older kid and a very good guitar player as well. Daniel. Can't think of his band now. But anyway. What's it called? It's bugging me now. Anyway. Um, Paula asks, do I need an assistant? Yes, I could do with an assistant, Paula. Um, how can I... I mean, I have an assistant who's very good. Uh, Indigo, you've probably seen her around. She helps with all sorts, of, all sorts of web stuff. But I'm always... There's, I've got too many... Always got too many jobs on... Um, do I still teach at the Institute? No, I don't teach at the Institute anymore. I uh, uh, I haven't taught there for quite a few years now, probably seven or eight years. Uh, 
I'm, I did do a course for ICMP online though, so there's uh, their new online version of ICMP I've done some lessons for and may well do some more in the future. Silver Chair, thank you very much. Um, do you know Derek Trucks, the Sly Guitar player? Well, I don't know him personally, I know who he is. One of the finest, if not the finest, Sly Guitar player to grace the planet. Incredible guitar player. Um, yeah, un unbelievable. That that live thing he, d he does with, I'm sure you've seen it if you're a f fan of Derek Trucks. And if you haven't seen it, go and look it up. Derek Trucks does his solo sitting next to B.B. King with John Mayer playing rhythm guitar. And, and Derek Trucks is just, it's one of the finest guitar moments that you'll ever see in your life. It is really genius, beautiful, like unbelievably beautiful guitar playing from Derek Trucks, just like off the scale stuff. It, uh, and, and you see B.B. King offering John uh, Mayer a solo and he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not playing after that. And I don't blame him because it's just... It wouldn't, you know, and I th I, I've got a feeling, somebody said uh, that BB said that it's the one of the finest blues he ever heard or something, some kind of comment like that. Definitely look it up. Unbelievable. Um, okay, how long have you been playing until things started to click? Um, it depends on what starting to click means because really being able to hear what I was doing only in the last 10 years or so, so I've, I've been playing for 30 years, scary, um, and for the first 20 of them I didn't really, I don't think I heard, was expressing myself properly as well as I do now, uh, but I, it, things clicked pretty early in that I was playing in a band when I was 12 and doing gigs and stuff, so it, you know, it depends on what you're talking about clicking. I wasn't very good when I was 12, right? I was able to play in a band and play rhythm guitar and the occasional kind of slight Chuck Berry style kind of a solo, I guess, but I definitely wasn't good at it. You know, I went to a music school as well. I did, um, when I, I did music at college and then uh, my dad said I had to go to university, right? So it was either I was going to university to do, I don't know, engineering or something like that or doing music. But the, the music version was classical guitar, so I had to go and do classical guitar. Um, but I never finished my degree. I dropped out before my degree to, to tour with bands because I was enjoying touring more. So I, I was just touring then for a while and I was teaching all, all through that whole period. I was teaching guitar since I was a kid. Since I was 12, I started teaching other neighborhood kids and the occasional adult. So, uh, yeah, it depends. I, there was lots of clicks along the way, but I'm not sure which one... Um, which one you might mean. Um, okay, heavy gauge string stain, string gauges. Yeah, um, string gauges, the, 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 if you understand the idea that pickups pick up changes in the magnetic field as the strings vibrate, right? So it makes kind of logical sense to me that if you've got a thicker string, that it's going to move the magnet more, which might make a thicker tone. Now, I'm, I'm not 100% certain that that's how it works, right? I'm not a physicist and I've not studied it, but that is my way of justifying why thicker strings sound better, because I definitely hear that thicker strings sound better. I'm not sure if that's the reason why, but that makes sense to me. Thicker strings have a thicker tone. I like thicker strings. However, um, because I play a lot, if I go much heavier than 10s, I, the skin on my fingers goes too quick. So I tend to practice on 10s most of the time. If I'm doing a record, sometimes I change up to 11s just because I quite like the, the thicker sound. Often on Gibson guitars, I use thicker strings because the, the bending feels different and I quite like it. Um, so I've got 11s, I think, on my 335 and, and my SG and... Uh, yeah. And I've got flat wounds on the jazz, the jazz guitar, but they're a different thing. Um, would you rather have been a star? Hmm. I don't know. I, I mean, I think I'd be kind of lying if I said no, that I wouldn't have liked to have, because I guess everybody kind of wants to. But I got to do all of the touring things. So, I, you know, I got flown around the world in, in you know, well, it wasn't first class all the time, but business class or whatever. And... and uh, we stayed in the best hotels and I've played for thousands of people every night and done tours and so I've got a bit of a taste of it but man, there's a lot of pressures on the stars you know I know it's easy for us to take a pop at them but you know when I was touring with Kate I used to I was shocked at how hard she had to work you know she was 
worked really hard all the time she'd you know we'd have gigs and we'd get to stay in the hotel room and or go for a cycle or wander around the town or whatever and she'd be up doing interviews all day and go to a telly and do, perform on tv and then come back and do more interviews and then go to the gig and then at the gig after sound check she'd have to do a meet and greet and meet meet punters and then sign some stuff and then we'd do the gig and then afterwards she'd have to meet more people or sponsors or something like that and then you know and then she had the same traveling and gig responsibilities we did so i'm um, you know I think there's a lot of dangers in all of being a star, you know, dangers for the ego, you know, uh, being famous and then coming down from not being famous because fame doesn't last forever. So, it's, you know, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't kind of, you know, I wouldn't have liked to have had a number one record or whatever. Or, but, you know, not everybody can be David Bowie or Keith Richards or whatever, you know, would have been pretty cool. I would have, I'm sure I would have enjoyed it, but it would have been such a different existence that you never know. Maybe I might have got involved with heroin and died at 20. <laughs> you know, you can't really. So I, yeah. Interesting question. Um, Barbara says, what's up with you and age? I don't know what's up with me and age. Well, getting older. Don't like it. I think that's normal. Um, uh can you put more lessons songs in Guitar Pro? I can't put songs in Guitar Pro because it breaches copyright. So that's why there's none of those. But I'm planning to do some more lessons in Guitar Pro. Um, is Katie's window Katie Mellower's window? No, um, it's Katie, my sister. My sister's name is Katie. And I wrote that song sitting outside her, what used to be her bedroom window in the house I used to live in in Tasmania, sitting on the balcony um, outside her window. That's, um, yeah, that was the name of that. It was nothing to do with Kate Miller. Although I was, I think I was working with Kate at the time still, so I can understand the confusion, but it wasn't. Um, uh, do you have problems muting the strings with my wrist? Do they have any tips? Do I have problems muting the strings with my wrist? Okay, I th I'm assuming you're talking about there. It's a bit trial and error because everyone's hand shaped a different way and sits on the string slightly different and it depends on the angle that you pick at and stuff like that. So it's very difficult for me to advise you that one online, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Uh, what's the best way to meet other musicians to play with? Well, I talked before about maybe going to rehearsal studios, uh, definitely jam nights. There's lots of jam nights in, at least in big cities. Uh, maybe going to a group classes is not another way that you might meet people, you know. Um, uh, swing feel, how to play it. So, uh, swing and shuffle, I'm never sure about differentiating between swing and shuffle. I always think of swing as being that kind of... Um, well, the, the, that sounds bad. If you think uh, like on the on the hi hat of a, uh, if you listen to a good jazz record where it's swing, Duke Ellington or something like that, you hear a little ting 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 ting. It's got a slightly. It's not like a shuffle where shuffle's going do 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 do. The swing seems to me to be more subtle. If I was going to try and differentiate, I'm just thinking that rides in the ding ting 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 ting. That's kind of what I have in, in mind for a, a swing feel. Um, uh, yeah, so that's it. But it, again, it's a, a different sort of a thing for guitar because quite often guitar in a swing bands, in the early bands, would be doing block boom. <laughs> you know do big chords or whatever so it's not got that same sort of swing as maybe the bass part or the drum part would um what's the longest period of time you did not pick up a guitar six weeks i didn't pick up a guitar for when i went to india a couple of years ago oh did i pick up a guitar no i played sitar a little bit <laughs> which doesn't count but i didn't touch a guitar i think for about six weeks do I like PRS guitars? Not particularly. Um, they just don't... PRS guitars never connected for me. I, I mean, they look beautiful, some of them. The paint jobs and stuff are incredible. They just didn't connect with me. 
Have I tried a graphite guitar? I have, and I've tried a carbon guitar. Didn't get me particularly excited. How do you play diminished bar chords? Um, uh, bad movement, should have done that really. Uh, sixth fret, fifth fret, uh, sixth fret, nothing on the fifth string, five, six, five. So the bar is with the first finger on the strings two, three, and four. Third finger goes in the middle, and second finger goes down. It's kind of a there's a few a few different ways of playing a diminished chord. Check out my lesson called uh, Ten Essential Jazz Chords or something like that. Jazz, essential Ten Essential Jazz Chords or Ten Basic Jazz Chords or something like that. Um, uh, can you play in the style of Django Reinhardt? No, I wish I could. Um, I wish I could play in the style of Django Reinhardt. Um, Stephen Lafferty gets a bonus point for recognising the rhythm changes. Well done. Um, I have a Daisy Rock guitar. Well done, D. Uh, but we got to meet you in India. But hopefully it wasn't six. Hopefully it was six weeks while I spent. Yeah, it was. Had a great time in India. Loved it. It was really good fun. <clears throat> Can you teach us easy noodling? I'm not sure what you mean by easy noodling. Sorry. How to fill in bass notes in between jazz chords. So that sort of thing that I just said before, that um, I've got a few lessons on that at the moment, walking bass stuff. I've got some blues and uh, one, what I just played, which was Autumn Leaves. Um, but I have a series coming out. I, I, I'm, well, it's not finished yet, but it's mostly sketched out the form of doing a, a series of lessons on uh, uh, on walking, how to learn to do walking bass, which is the way I learned walking bass was a series in my, when I was about 15 or 16, I discovered a book by a guy called Barry Galebraith. Um, I can't remember the name of the book now, but it had this song in it called Wind Hash 2, which was something like a... Uh, 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 I'm trying to remember it. It's gone with the wind anyway. But it, the idea, having this kind of set thing. Whatever, it had it like a set piece. And to learn to do walking bass, I learned a few of these kind of set pieces, which I think is a really good plan. And then I transcribed a whole bunch of Ron Carter uh, bass lines who was kind of my, well, probably my favourite jazz bassist in that style. So I transcribed a bunch of his lines uh, and worked out how he was joining chords together and, and did it. So that's kind of what I'll be doing in that course. Can I take my cap off? I can. I have some hair. I'm not completely bald. Get in there, but not yet. In fact, I was a bit disappointed. Like, uh, no one noticed that I had a new hat. I like this new hat, but anyway. Um... Have you thought about wearing other hats in your videos? Like a top hat? Well, this is a different hat, but I'm definitely not going to wear a top hat. That would look pretty stupid. How to play more complicated Travis picking licks without using tempo. I don't know enough about that. So, I'm not sure I, I, I can answer that, because I don't... Travis picking licks. Um, yeah, no, I don't do much in the way of... Um, Travis picking licks. I mean, all that kind of... That's kind of the limit of my Travis picking, but then, I, you know, I can do a little bit more... Like... Maybe. Whatever, I'm kind of fumbling around a bit. It's not really my... It's not really my thing. Um, uh, could you do some bass lessons? I have a bass, I'm just a bit, um, uh, there are probably, well not probably, there are definitely better bass players around, and there's some good teachers, oh, what's the guy that I've found recently, there's an English guy, um, Scott's Bass Lessons, I think it's a paid for site, I haven't seen his paid for stuff, but he talks a lot of sense when it comes to the to the other stuff. Seems like a nice fella. Um, I like the Grateful Dead. Plant hair, Justin. 
what do you mean? I should plant it in, or I've got hair like a plant. That's a bit weird. Um, one last breath by Creed. I don't know. I don't know how it goes, so I've got no hope of picking it. How to strum guitar without pick? So uh, strumming guitar without a pick. So I, uh, I quite often like using the outside of my thumb because it gets you a really nice soft sound. Quite often just use, in fact there's a lesson uh, next week or the week after which is uh, Downtown Train by Tom Waits uh, where I just use the fleshy part of my thumb. Otherwise you can just use your finger and just... You know, it's not, um, it's not difficult just to use your finger. Sounds different for me because I've got plastic fingernails. So it tends to sound like a, a guitar pick anyway. Um... Please show Hey Hey by Eric Clapton. I've done a lesson on that uh, Tenzin, so you can go and check that out. I don't know Milk It by Nirvana. How to improve alternate picking. Um, alternate picking, uh, I, I mentioned him last week, and I'm not trying to do a big flog on, on uh, Troy's thing, and uh, I'm not getting pay he's not paying me to do it, but uh, you might want to go and check out Cracking the Code website. Uh, by a guy called Troy Grady who's done a lot of great investigations into how alternate picking works um, and go and check out his Masters of Mechanics series you'll find that um, very useful for and, and it's what I'm using at the moment uh, working on my alternate picking because I'm re-examining my alternate picking myself to go more for his downward pick slanting he calls it so uh, the basic idea is instead of just going up and down this way you kind of go in and out while you pick so that when you're out, it's easy to change strings because the going down and up means you get tangled up in the strings often, whereas if you go in and out, you don't. So it's something I'm currently working on myself. Um, more John Mayer style, maybe. I have to find the right songs. Most effects used effects pedal would probably be uh, the Strime and Timeline. I really like that pedal. I think it's a fantastic pedal. Um, where do you drink? Can I stand you a beer for Monday? I think Monday I'm going to be pretty busy in the studio. I've got a session on and a bunch of stuff to, to record. So uh, maybe not Monday, but another time. I, I, I do need to do a few more meetups uh, this year because I, I did the year before last, I did a few meetups at, at my local uh, boozer in uh, Chiswick, but that's changed ownership and it's not the kind of place that I'm likely to hang out at anymore. So I don't really have a local, but I'll... Um, I'll see, but it'd be good to have some beers with you guys. Um, can you teach some modal licks? Um, modal licks. Um, there's some modal licks coming on the in the Blues Lee Guitar Series too. Some Dorian licks. Uh, I mean, I'm sure I know some modal licks, but I don't tend to think of them that way. I think of it in a different. If you go and look at my modes course on my site, you'll see it's just a slightly different, it's just the major scale, so I'm more interested in hearing stuff than having set licks when it comes to the major scale. Uh, lesson on pedals from Paula, maybe. Uh, uh, I plan to do a lesson on my pedal board and go through all of the different pedals I've got on my pedal board. Um, but because I've got this problem with the sound in the studio at the moment, I'm waiting to, for that to be fixed because there's no point, it doesn't seem to make sense to me to do a lesson on getting a guitar sound when the guitar sound is not going to be very good. Um, uh, favorite guitar solo? Oh god, that's too hard. I don't know. I don't know if I've got a favorite guitar solo, to be completely honest. I mean, it might, it might be something generic, you know, I was going to say Cliffs of Dover by Eric Johnson because that's pretty terrifying, but I'm not sure it's my favourite one. Um, I'd have to think about it more. Um, okay, how do I improvise solos in scales? Any lessons you recommend? So, uh, yeah, you improvise solos in scales. You don't... I think one of the misconceptions of scales is that it's... That you improvise with them but the scales are just alphabets so you need to make words and phrases out of the out of the alphabet um, it's more 
it's easier to understand it in blues, but the same sort of thing happens in the major scale. But with the major scale, you have to react more to and listen more. With blues, you have set phrases, licks, words that you can put together. It's a bit easier to put put together. Um, but I'm remaking the the master major scale series soon. Some of it's going to be free because I want you guys to learn how to do it. Um, how many guitars do you own? Which one can you not live without? Um, I've I've got lots. I don't know, quite a few. But I do it for a living, so I kind of I can justify it to myself. The ones I don't live without really are the the um, my Fender Telecaster, sixties uh, uh, one, and my three three five. They're kind of my two main electric guitars. My mate and Messiah is definitely my favourite acoustic guitar. Um, uh, so those, yeah, if, can I have three? Is that all right? I love this one too. I, I'm really enjoying this. Uh, uh, plays lovely. Um, you know, most of my other strats have, have got a higher action, a little bit chunkier to play. Um, this one's a little bit easier. Um, okay. Uh, I want to buy a wah wah pedal. I am very confused. Uh, just go and buy a wah wah any if you're new to it. Buy any wah wah pedal and, and explore it. They're like a standard crybaby wah wah. Just go and try it and check it out and get used to it because there's no point in buying the most expensive cool wah wah pedal uh, if you don't know how to use them because you don't really know what you want out of your pedal yet because they're all just different. It's not like there's a best one. They're just different. Uh, yes, I can play Thunderstruck by ACDC, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> um, uh, as we speak about blues, do you know Rory Gallagher? Of course I know Rory Gallagher. He's incredible. Um, tips on inferiority complex. You've asked that one a few times there, Sink. It kills me every time. I'm not sure if that's a joke. But anyway. Um, uh, I love your tune played on Richard Morrison. Can you play this? Oh, the Richard Morrison guitar. What's that? Tinkerbell. Yeah, um... I haven't put that on a record yet. That'll, um, I've been meaning to make a, another guitar record for forever, and it keeps getting pushed back by other things. But um, I can. I'm not sure I can remember it all. Mm. Oh, and it's in a funny tuning, so it's going to be a little bit of a, a f funny one to do that one. Uh, when can I jump around with my guitar like a rock star and be able to play? I don't know. Um, Okay, favourite John Coltrane album would probably be Giant Steps. Uh, should I always alternate my IMA fingers when playing fingerstyle? No, it depends on what you want to play. So you'll be using all sorts of different finger combinations. Uh, please play a bit of Nine Pound Hammer. And how do you make a sponge cake? Um, how do I choose band mates? Well, I've only got one band and they're all some of my best friends. So that's pretty easy. Uh... Do you know the band Doors? No, I don't. I've heard of them, but I don't know any of their music. How's your cat doing? Cat is doing great. Thanks for asking. Can you do more Doors or more Pink Floyd lessons? Yes, at some point I'll be doing more Pink Floyd very soon. In fact, that's quite near the top of the to-do list. Um, who won the guitar giveaway? I'm not sure there was a guitar giveaway. If you mean the record player giveaway, I've emailed the guy who won three or four times and he hasn't got back to me, so I need to pick another winner, actually. That's on my to-do list for this week, is to pick another winner, because that guy's been now the, whatever it is, 48... I can't remember it was in the terms and conditions. 48 days with no response or whatever. Um, thanks for spending two hours with us. You're very welcome, Matt. Oh, it is. It's about that time. It's funny, I was going to show you some whittling. In fact, I might just sneak it in. Because I'd, uh, I'd been mucking, uh, I had a session with this Kemper thing the other day. And my Dario, my friend Dario, showed me this cool sound, like heavy metal sound. And I'm not used to... I'm not used to playing with that much distortion. That's not really my... Um, not really my thing, but I was just having a little bit of fun with um, doing all of these, um, trying to remember to do this, you know, that lick first of all, and then I the extension of it, and then I remembered you can tap it, so putting an extra, and then I remembered you could tap and slide. <laughs> 
I've just been having loads of fun, like in between I did a, a, a little session with a friend of mine and then between that and the live show I was just sitting there doing all of these little twiddly whittles um, and uh, for once nobody was asking about doing whittly show off licks so we'll do all of those another time because we're not going to do them now because uh, it's the end of the show um, well look guys uh, yeah, but now I've given you a taster you have to remember to ask for whittly licks another time sometime um so thank you very much for coming along. Um, I'm sorry there's a load of questions here that have gone unanswered and there's some a, a whole page of really good questions as well that I couldn't get get to. Um, but hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the session and uh, uh, I'll be back next week. I'm probably, I'm thinking I might move this to an every fortnight thing instead of every week thing coming up just because I've got a few, uh, well, friends have asked me out for dinner and stuff a few times I can not make it any Saturday nights is a bit of a pain so I'm thinking of trying to move it to every second uh, second week but not sure there'll definitely be one next week still um, so a uh, very big thank you to the moderators uh, DJ Keith and, and, and Tawny who have been helping out there with uh, putting the questions over onto the onto the live stream for me and a, a really big thank you for coming along I really hope you're enjoying the, the live session um, uh, if you've got feedback for me, always appreciate some feedback about, you know, what's going on, how I might be able to improve it. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can't do some more fun stuff next week. Uh, I'll put another thing in the Facebook events thing. Oh, and I've got to put the Anzac biscuits. Somebody remind me on Facebook to put the Anzac biscuits up recipe. And, uh, well, look, yeah, thanks again for coming along. Thank you very much to the moderators for your continued help and support. Really appreciate it, guys. And, uh, you have yourselves a fantastic rest of your weekend. And uh, I'll see you Tuesday for the launch of the new Blues League guitar module. Bang! Starts on Tuesday. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be pretty exciting as well. And uh, I'll be hanging around when the video goes live, which will be about lunchtime. I'll be having a, a period of a few hours where I'll be hanging around after the after the show to answer, answer questions specifically on YouTube. So, um, yeah. You take care of yourselves, have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.